Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, we will start the session at 7.5.
Hello everyone and Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Awais and I will be hosting today's session. First of all, I would like to welcome you all on behalf of Dice Analytics for today's session, Build a Carrier in Data Warehouse and Business Intelligence. Uh, I am glad to introduce our speakers today, Mr. Ahmed Shoaib and Fahad Ikram, who will be leading this session. Uh, Ahmed Ikram uh, will start and Mr. Ahmed Shoaib will join shortly. Uh, Mr. Ahmed has more than 15 years of experience in business and service solution management expertise. He has delivered public and corporate trainings on Microsoft Power BI to more than 100 plus participants. Worked with top class yeah. companies, BTCL, Huawei, Flextronics, Realcom, Nor Consultant, Telematics, and Northern Networks Asia Limited of the world, and helping them to achieve the company's goal, strong business sense and industry expertise with the ability to analyze, plan, and forecast business activities. Uh, Mr. Fahad Ikram is an experienced data professional with more than five years of working experience in large data analytics architectures of healthcare, digital financial services, banking, and insurance domains skilled in designing and developing data warehouses and business intelligence platforms by practicing a calculated and concise approach and using modern data management platforms, data integration tools, SQL, and Python. It's a request to all the attendees to note your questions during the session and ask your queries in the Q&A session at the end. If you have still any queries uh, during the session, then still you can unmute yourself and ask the questions. Thank you so much. Over to Mr. Fahad. Hi, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Can you guys hear me? Yes, you are. Okay. Just let me show the screen. Presentation. Uh, is the screen is visible? Yes, it's visible. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I welcome you all to the webinar organized by Dice Analytics for building a career in data warehouse and business intelligence. I'll start with my own introduction. The name is Fahad, and it's been more than five years that I've uh, that I've been associated with the field of data. I started my career as an ETL developer, uh, maintaining, optimizing the ETL architecture. And currently I'm working as a lead data engineer where I have in Tenix, where I have implemented end-to-end data warehousing and PA solutions. I work on various ETL tools and business intelligence tools as well. So moving forward, I would like uh, some introduction from the participants. Can you guys please unmute and volunteer some introduction? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so any volunteers for the introduction? I would like to be more familiar with the audience. All right, uh, just move forward then. Okay, so starting, starting off, we'll, we'll start with the databases. So what is a database? A database is basically a software in which you can store your data in structure and organized fashion. It provides you an ease of access for querying your data, for querying the data. Uh, however, the access of data is provided to you. The, it ensures data safety. Uh, by this statement, I mean that when data is basically stored on disk, every database has some files on, on which it writes data and that is stored on the disk. These, uh, these files are not easily readable and only the data so database software can read these files. Uh, these files are basically encrypted and unless and until you have the access of data, you have the access of curing data and viewing that data. You cannot view the data. Furthermore, a database implements data integrity. It does not allow uh, various anomalies, like you cannot store 
your string data in the integer type data. Okay. Moving forward, these are some of the famous databases, Oracle, Teradata, SQL Server, MySQL, and PostgreSQL. Every database has its own pros and cons. And some of the databases are more inclined towards the transactional processes, well, whereas other databases are more inclined towards providing or serving an analytical purpose. So there are two main types of architectures that can be implemented on the, on the database to support either the analytical purpose or serve the transactional purpose. In these slides, there are a lot of aspects that have been compared between the, in these two um, architectures, OLAP and OLTP. So I'll just highlight some of the two, like um, OLAP can support your complex queries, whereas OLTP <coughs> handles high volume of transaction and its core purpose, the core purpose of OLTP is to basically provide write optimization. Whereas OLAP is more read optimized, read optimized storage. In your OLAP uh, architecture, you basically store your data in aggregated and summarized form so that uh, when the data is extracted, it is ready for analysis purpose. Whereas in OLTP, the data is pretty normalized uh, and it supports the writing of data quite efficiently. Some of the use cases of OLTP are your point of sales, um, like e-commerce, e banking, and for OLAP in the business intelligence, data visualization, and reporting purpose. Moving forward, in, we get to know about what a data warehouse is. A data warehouse is a single point of truth. Basically, it is also an architecture that is implemented on the database. The data is integrated from various sources and it is uh, combined in the data warehouse to support your analysis and serve various analytical purpose. You can cleanse and transform your data in a data warehouse. So this is a general overview of the structure of a data warehouse. You have multiple sources. It can be an OLTP system, uh, or your flat files or any other source of data, uh, any other source of data, you extract your data and then you put your data into the data warehouse. A data warehouse further comprise of three main layers, a staging layer, a core layer, a core layer and a semantic layer. A staging layer serves as a landing layer for the data where you basically dump your data uh, and its main purpose is to remove the dependency from the source. Uh, we have often, uh, during my experience, I have often faced a scenario where we have, uh, like if, if a source file is present, then we have three uh, hours of window to load the data into the database, data warehouse, or the OLTP system is inactive during off business hours. So during that time, we need to extract the data and then, uh, and stage it into the data warehouse. After that, we have a core layer where we uh, further cleanse your data, where we cleanse the data and perform certain transformation. We create data marts, data cubes. Uh, we implement slowly changing dimension, the concept of various slowly changing dimensions upon it. And the final layer is the semantic layer where the data is present for the end business user. They can access this, uh, this layer and further visualize either user data for visualization, reporting, or any other BI need. So there are two main concepts of extracting your data and landing it into the data warehouse. One approach is ETL and other is ELT. They stand for extract, transform, and load. The letters in stand for extract, transform, and load. The concept of ETL has been uh, has been in a while, in quite a long while in the market, whereas the concept of ELT is quite new. In ETL, you basically first extract your data, transform it, and then place it into data warehouse. So the data is placed in a transformed order in the data warehouse. Whereas in ELT, 
you extract your data, you stage it, you load it into the data warehouse, and then perform for the transformations upon it. And after that, you can use this data for any analytical purpose. So the main difference is the process of transformation that is taking place either before loading or after loading. The process of ERP has shown uh, quite a lot of flexibility as compared to the process of ETL as it is less time consuming. And basically in this process, you give your load to the database and it, uh, databases are more optimized for handling data. So instead of transforming the data in the software and in ETL tool, you transform your data in the data warehouse, okay? These are some of the ETL tools that are currently in use in the market. Uh, every tool has their own pros and cons. Um, Informatica talent and data stage are quite robust ETL tools. So that's it from my side. Over to you, Abbas. Uh, Salamuko OS, uh, am I audible right now? Welcome, Salam. Yes, sir, you are audible. <clears throat> so it's my turn to start the things? Uh, yes, sir, you can proceed. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Salam alaikum and good evening uh, to everyone. Uh, you guys are, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, it's, it's a very, uh, like a short thing that uh, we are giving you a little bit of an intro on, uh, like uh, uh, Fahad has uh, uh, given a a brief intro of the whole thing that what we guys will be uh, uh, seeing in the data warehousing part, and I'll be uh, taking you on the path of uh, what what's going on on the BI part. So, uh, am am I allowed to share my screen as well? Yes, sir. Thank you. Just let me. Uh, guys, uh, my screen is visible to you all or not? Yes, sir. It's visible. It's visible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, ji. Uh, the thing is that, uh, like Fahad has said, that <clears throat> that what's going on within the data uh, data warehouse? It's like you have a lot of data coming in and out from different sources, or it could be a one source or third, like that thing, and uh, you are managing the data over there. You have to structure it, you have to bifurcate it, you have to plot it to uh, different slots, and then you are able to see the data in a very structured form, the way you wanted to see it. That's the main point, how you wanted to see it. After doing that particular part, you go towards a BI2. It could be a Tableau, it could be Power BI, it could be anything, what, whatsoever you wanted to have it. But over here, in this particular session, in this particular training program, we'll be taking you on uh, uh, on the applicabilities of Power BI because it's a free tool and it's it's you can have more detailed analysis of your data over here uh, in comparison to Tableau. Uh, Tableau is a, is it's not free and it's expensive and uh, <clears throat> it's more like like you are having a cosmetic thing over there, more glamorous. That's what I talk about uh, uh, Tableau over here. So in general, when you are using a BI tool, uh, you have to pass through all the data analysis development methodology. And you have three, uh, you have six different uh, stages over here in order to achieve your goal. That's the end goal that what you want to extract from that particular data. And that's the analysis reports. First, you have to build an understanding of your business, understanding that what what you did, what your data is saying, what is what is your main objective of utilizing the data. You have to be more concerned about the domain knowledge. What sort of domain knowledge you want to, to have over there? It could be a lot of scenarios. We'll be discussing a lot of scenarios in detail while uh, we'll be having the session. And uh, just just for a glimpse, that while having a general business understanding of your uh, whole scenario where, where you're working or 
what you want to learn over there. You have to be clear about your business objectives. Then you have to assist the situation. It's just like, like watching a child grow. Uh, let's take a small example. Uh, like I, I had an investment. I had a, I, I just placed that particular investment uh, in order to have a grocery store of my own. A small grocery store, you can say that. And uh, <clears throat> the main objectives, business objectives were that I just wanted to have a little bit of an earning and I just wanted to uh, pay my rent of that particular shop. I just assessed the whole situation by getting information from here and there from different resources, some of my friends who were doing into this particular business. Then I determined my goals. What should my, be my goals? So there's a big difference between the goals and the objectives. Objectives are th those particular milestones which led you to your goal. Okay. And in detail, we'll be discussing over there while we'll be having the training program. Then you produce a plan. And the plan is that what, what's, what, how you are going to make up all those things. After getting all these, uh, completing this thing, you get to know what is the data understanding. The data you got from your, uh, uh, from your friends who are into this business or the data you are building up yourself. So you are collecting the data, then you have to have a clear description of your data. You have to go with the data types. You have to ensure the quality of the data you are putting in. And you have to wireframe the whole thing. Wireframe is sort of the thing that you just have to have a little bit of a like a, a you can say when you are you are making a map of a, a house, you go for a blueprint of the house as well. So that's how you wireframe whole thing. If you are into some sort of like some people are into, I may say that they usually uh, usually create websites. So they used to get this wireframe work over there where to plot the things, where to go to logins, where you have to plot other things, where you have to sign up, where you have to log out. So these are the, just like a sketch you are making of your reports that how you have to place up the things. Like every other data warehousing concept, in every BI tool, you have to pass through the same ETL thing. You have to extract the data from a particular source. It could be the data warehouse you're working, or it could be the web from where you are getting the information, or it could be some other source from where you are getting all the things and you are ingesting, ingesting those particular things into your BI tool. After doing that, it's not like this, that you definitely are getting a trans, you are getting a structured form of a data from the data engineering part. The people who are working in the data engineering, the data warehouse, it could be SQL Server, it could be data warehouse, it could be any source. They are giving you sort of a structured form data. But the thing is that when you are getting a chunk of that particular data from them, still you have to transform it according to your requirement. And what is the requirement that for every BI tool, like if we are talking about Power BI, you have to be very much clear about the dimensional and the fact tables. This is the concept which will be, you will be learning part of it in the data warehousing part with Pahat and rest of it, that how it is implemented in a BI tool with me over there. And after transforming the data in accordance to your requirements, then what you are doing, you are loading the data, you are making a data model. And what the data models are, it could be a star schema, it could be like uh, a galaxy schema, it could be a snowflake. This is how you are managing your data. After that particular thing, you go towards the analysis part. And what the analysis part is doing over there, the analysis part says that you have to make the reports, you have to do the data visualization, you have to go with the data storytelling. But before that, you have to go, you have to pass through a number of analysis on the data you have. And this is the key to reach this particular point. Without a deep analysis of your data, you are not able to create any of the report over here. 
the report development, the data visualization, this is all part of the way you want to see your analysis. So you need to be very much clear on this part that this is the cosmetic thing of your analysis. This is the cosmetic thing of your analysis. This has nothing to do with your analysis unless you have a clear line of analysis what you're doing. Are you guys following it or not? Please say yes or no. I won't bite. Guys, is this concept clear with you all or not? Yes. That's good. Okay. So, what about the data storytelling? We'll be seeing it in the upcoming slides. Now the com thing comes up that are we going with the right design principles? What are the design principles? The visualizations, what we are plotting it over there. Are they accurate according to the analysis what we are doing? Apart from all these things, you have been seeing this feedback and control system over here. This is a feedback and control system that at every point you have the opportunity to go back and review your things. But when you are doing the analysis and you are sending all your analysis for the evaluation part, you are at the point of no return over here. This is the point of no return. After that, whatever you decide, you have to stick with it. So this is why we are saying that at the evaluation point, you need to evaluate your results. You have to do the apple to apple comparison what is going on in the market, what is the analysis you are running. And if the data is not correct, you have to check the authenticity of your data at this point. This is how you can win the things that how you can be plotting all those particular things. Then you have, if you have an issue, you need to review your processes. The review of the processes is not just meant to see that if there is an issue, then you have to review the process. It's not like this. You can review the process if you are getting the good results as well. Because in this way, you can optimize your resources, right? And then after doing that, you are going towards the next suggested step. And what's the next suggested step? Either you want to launch a new product, a new service, you need to deploy a new thing, you have to pitch new product or add on to your value, whatsoever you wanted to do, you can do the development part. This is the complete life cycle of what you are doing. Are you clear with the things that, is there a difference between data engineering, data analysis and data sciences? Anyone who can, who can uh, let me know about this thing? Anyone? That what, what we are doing, are we, are we talking about something uh, going for a futuristic approach or uh, what we are doing? We are just talking about the past and the present only. Anyone? Any wild guess? Guys, you need to speak up. We are not in a classroom and I won't buy. No idea. Uh, your silence is not like uh, I won't accept it as a huh? I'll accept it as a no. Sir, the data scientist who is to machine learning AI ki turu model trend karke uspe kam karte hain. Anji. Data bhi. So, yahan ab kya karne ja rahe hain? 
यहाँ तो सर हम एस पे क्यूरी चलाते हैं यहाँ पावर बी पे डैशबोर्ड वगैरह बनाते हैं बट हम अलगोदम के साथ जो है नहीं काम करते डेटा एनालिसिस में exactly exactly so the main thing is that uh, i'll be i'll be answering your question in urdu or either you can understand hindi yes we are very much true you are very much true yahan hum jo bhi baat karenge hum ek historic data ke upar baat karenge fahad jo aapko data ke bare mein batayenge wo data aapke paas ek historic data pada hua hai right वो आपको बताएंगे ये इस डेटा को स्ट्रक्चर कैसे करना है और मैं क्या बताऊंगा कि स्ट्रक्चर डेटा को मजीद बी टोल के ऊपर कैसे लेके आए ठीक है सो so, आप अपने पास्ट के डेटा का एनालिसिस करोगे और उस एनालिसिस को करने के बाद एनालिसिस आप फहद भाई के पास भी कर रहे होगे पर वहां क्या होगा आपको एक टेबलर फॉर्म में डेटा नजर आएगा यहाँ उसी टेबलर फॉर्म को हम मजीद थोड़ा एनालिसिस करके एक विजुअलाइजेशन के अंदर दिखाएंगे तो दिस इज लाइक इट्स अ कॉम्बो थिंग तो हम हिस्टोरिक डेटा को क्या कर रहे होंगे हम इस हिस्टोरिक डेटा को ला के एक विजुअलाइजेशन में दिखा रहे डेटा इंजीनियरिंग चल रही है डेटा एनालिसिस चल रहा है वाइल यूजिंग अ बीआई टूल और अभी हमने बात नहीं की कि डेटा साइंसेस क्या चल रहा है ठीक हो गया सो वी वोट वी वोट बी टॉकिंग अबाउट डेटा साइंसेस बिकॉज हम डेटा इंजीनियरिंग और डेटा एनालिसिस के ऊपर बात कर रहे हैं गुड टू गो एंड सेकेंड थिंग <clears throat> that we cannot encapsulate anything uh, everything in data sciences right so we have to be very much clear about uh, the branches what we are working over here acha ji uh, after passing through all these things business intelligence is everywhere it's not like uh, like people used to think that if we talk about business intelligence it is only linked with the business people or like the management sciences people business is could be anywhere it's not related just to sales profit we do take the examples of sales profit and cost because it's easy to understand the workability of a product so the product is our tool that's the bi bi tool what we are working on it so it's very much easier for us to make an understanding and in this way you can have the vast uh, you can see the vast capability of a tool that how it can work so this is this is how we can run the show over there but business intelligence could be there like uh, in the hospitals uh, either you can manage the operation of the hospitals it could be like uh, in the in industrial manufacturing firms over there you they can they can manage their operations on the manufacturing part they are getting the data from their different machines automations and then they can work it out that how they can increase the life of their things because they are just putting up the data over there and they have the historic data and they wanted to analyze that particular data right so the business intelligence is not just limited to the business thing only now we are moving towards the point that uh, like how we can transform the data and go for a, a successful uh, you can say a successful decision making uh, can you guys give me a second uh, just give me a second okay just a minute uh, just a minute i'm really i'm really sorry apologies for that okay guys i'm back again uh can you build in understanding that what this uh, elaborated thing is saying over here you are transforming the data you are making a report and you are making the decisions based upon uh, the data driven things so how you see the things over here can anyone tell me about this thing that how you are seeing the things because uh, my perspective is something different over here can anyone let me know that what what's their perspective sir question ko ek dafa repeat kare ah uh, ji mera question ah uh, well by the way ah uh, ah uh, everyone can understand urdu and hindi
Okay, I'll repeat it in English again. Uh, that my question is that this elaborated thing over here is saying that this is, this is an aggregation of the data. This is how you are presenting the data. This is like a sort of a warehouse from you where you are getting the data over here and you are presenting the data in this form. And then again, you are taking some decisions based upon the data you have made it away. Do you think that this elaborated thing over here, getting the management to some particular decision or not? Or they are confused over here? Yes, sir. It's a... Uh, uh... Uh, they if they have a, a complete picture of a uh, complete big big picture of a, of your data data yeah. analysis uh, compiled data and then uh, they can add uh, check uh, they can analyze and make an make an perfect decision make a perfect decision on it it's yeah. it's a uh, but 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 what i see that they are not able to take any decisions because it's an arrow over here it's an arrow over here and this is also confusing over here can you see that? Is this thing visible to everyone? Yes. So what's going on? Then you are making a very colorful report over here, but the report's result is not making any sense for the management to take a decision over here. So it's not like this that making a colorful report will get you to some analysis over there you have to be very much confined with the report what what the visualizations you are doing the design patterns what you are doing the design principle what design principle you are thinking over here in order to make in order to take the management to some decisions over here in order to make them evaluate something properly so you need to be very much clear about what what sort of visualizations you are using in order to elaborate what you your analysis analysis over there right so moving forward again this is the pyramid of the complete uh, uh like uh, business intelligence intelligence process over here that you make a data foundation that's a data integration then you go towards the business intelligence part that way you want where you can see that what's the impact when to happen what to happen you make visualizations you do the analytics over there you make the reports dashboard performance information delivery and then afterwards you just take it to the next leap that's the analytical part you do the statistical analysis data mining predictivity of the things what you have learned in the past this is where you start doing the data sciences part you just learn you just have learned to this level that okay this is my historic data I have I have done such sort of an analysis. Now I know that what has happened and what should be I doing in the future. But you need to be have a predictability of your future that what you are going to do in the future, what you are planning to do in the future, what implications or up till what time that procedure could run. Then you make data models, you predictive modeling over there in data sciences, you go for the AI thing, and then you get to know more about what your data can get into it and what you can get out of your data, right? This is the data life cycle and the business intelligence thing. This is the same thing what we have been doing over there in, in the previous slides. This is like an elaborated thing that how internally the things are moving on. You are getting a data infusion from different sources. Like it's 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 like you get getting from social media. You are getting the data from your mobiles uh, and other data sources. You are just collecting the data and then you are doing an ingestion over here. After going towards the data lake and preparation of everything, you are just settling up in a proper way in a data warehousing. You are settling up your data in a data data warehousing setup, and after there. From there, you are getting chunks of data in order to compute uh, compute your data and present your data in a better way by using a BI tool. This is <clears throat> a sort of an analysis of Gartner analysis of BI tools. Uh, like it's like since two, 2021, 
Microsoft Power BI is, is the leader over here. It's not like this that rest of the tools are not working properly. The rest of the tools are working properly, but what they are doing that they in their own domains, they are working properly over here. Like Tableau has its own value, but why Microsoft Power BI is taking the lead because it's, it's cheap, it's free. The Power BI desktop part is free. The services part is also, you can purchase it on a very nominal price. If you are a single user, uh, I have a question over here. So I have any future scope of business intelligence development. Yes, uh, 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 Ali, uh, yes, there is a big scope over here. You can do a lot uh, while, uh, while learning any of the BI tools over here. You can do a lot of things, okay? So there are a lot of opportunities in the market uh, waiting for you in order to uh, get uh, get a clear thing, right? Okay, uh, and you can see it over here that uh, you have ClickSense over here, you have Oracle, IBM is over here, SaaS is over here, and uh, MicroStrategy over here. These are all big short tools over here. Like MicroStrategy, we used to use MicroStrategy in a number of places like Big organizations use uh, microstrategy well. You can you are getting a data on billion of rows on, on on a daily basis. So this is how every tool is having its own uh, like priority or you can say its own place in the market. Moving forward, like the type of reports and dashboards you can make. So like there are like four different sort of things that you can work it out uh, on the report part. You can make exploratory, exploratory reports built on the discovery of new information, informative reports built for information, explanatory reports uh, built on insights. You can make a KPI reports built on an intention things. This is how you can make up the things. What is the data, what is data storytelling? Actually, there is a bit of a gap between business side and the data technologies. So what the what the things are going on, like why we have clubbed this uh, particular training program over here, like in the data warehouse, you are doing all the technical sort of a work over there, technical analysis of the data. You are like doing the boutiques over there. You are doing fast road over here. There are a number of things you are doing, which Mr. Fahad will be uh, 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 like uh, training you over there in like uh, six, uh, four to five weeks over in the data warehousing that how you can uh, transform your data in a better way and you can place it in a data warehousing setup. So this is the technical part of the thing. And this is what the data technology is working. But what in the market is going on, that what is the expect expectation of the, you can say the employer or your end, end user or it could be an end, end customer over there. What is their expectations? Their expectations is are that that the person who is doing this data engineering work, he should also be knowing the business aspect of the things. That how you can elaborate these things, what you are doing in the data engineering, how you can make more analysis of your things, and how you can perform a good analysis as in in respect to the in reference to the business aspects. So we have we too have clubbed this thing together. In order to have the participants know this thing that after doing this data engineering part, how they can move forward to the business intelligence part, how they can club both of these things and they can give a better performance in their life, how they can upskill their uh, abilities over there, right? And in the next slide, this is this is the same thing that how we extract the changes and how the narratives are built, explanations, lighting, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we'll be having these things in detail while having uh, our sessions over there. This is a small, uh, you can say a flow of that, how you can go for the data story building thing. So the first thing is the context or the domain knowledge that how you are going to elaborate on your data things over there. First, you have to, make a good analysis. You are going to build some mayors over there. Uh, you have to take a deep dive of the analysis. Then you start choosing up the visuals that what could be the perfect visual to elaborate your analysis. It's not like this that every particular uh, uh, like visual will elaborate your thing. 
after going toward, towards the next step, you go for the clutters, eliminators, like you have different uh, cluttering things over there, like uh, uh, scatter plot charts. You can do a filtering over there. You can you can club different visuals in order to elaborate a particular section of your uh, report over there. Then you have can also create some focusing things over there. You can you can focus. Uh, guys, just give me a second. <clears throat> uh, then you can start working on the focus things over there. And you can you can uh, place some focusing aspect on your visual. The way you can see that it's it's a gray grayscale thing, and you are putting it something grayish blue over here. After that, you come towards the storytelling part, and the storytelling part is just not limited to the thing that you are making a report and you are not elaborate. You are not able to explain that particular report. So you have to be capable of starting. Uh, the things that you have to present it, how you can present your report. And we'll definitely, will ask you to present your report in the end of the session. Okay? So don't uh, be on the thing that uh, in six weeks or eight weeks, we won't be doing that. We won't letting you go away with without explaining your report over there. Right, Fatsa? We'll be doing it, inshallah. Yes, sir, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jira. Uh, moving forward, uh, you have different pictures over here. Uh, I have different three stories and uh, uh, how to build a story over here. Let's see that uh, whether our story will work or not. I have three different stories and uh, in every story you can see something like uh, a focus thing. I have one story of uh, uh, Snow White and Seven Drafts. I have Alice in the Wonderland. And then I have Star Wars. So anything particular you guys can see over here where I, I'm getting the focus? I have few focusing things over here in every story. Anyone can point out the focus parts. Are you guys aware of these three stories? Uh, yes, but uh, I've, I've seen some numbers here and then that define the stories as well. Yeah, it could be the things, uh, it could be numbers as well. But, but mostly we are talking about the visualization. Like Sorry? Uh, mainly we are focusing the visualizations right now. Any particular thing? Like over here in Snow White and uh, the Seven Drops, uh, we, are, we are more focused on the Red Apple because that, uh, that was the main focusing point of the whole story. The witch is having the Red Apple over here. The green draft was the most comical draft over here in the whole story. This, this, this was a small draft and it was not having any beard. Uh, in the second story, the witch was green. Yeah, definitely the witch was green as per the story. Uh, I've seen the movies a, toy, a lot over there in, uh, in my past as well. And uh, Alice... Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, the, sorry, Wizard of Oz. It was the Wizard of Oz, not, the, not Alice in the Wonderland. It was Wizard of Oz. And uh, Wizard, in the Wizard of Oz, she was wearing the red shoes. And it, 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 red shoes, green. yes. And in the third part, uh, sorry, Dark Dark Vedar is having the red sword, uh, but this this draft is is having a green color as well. So this is how you are uh, creating different focus for uh, for different uh, main characters. That how you are implementing the stories. But if what if I just dump my data in such a manner? So what do you guys say? Is this a good story or this one is a good story? This is an unstructured form and this is a structured form. Every story is giving a separate meaning. Is this clear? Every story is giving a separate meaning. Yeah, yeah, clear. It's clear? So this is how you yes. have to do your visualizations. Now I'm getting towards the next step that how you have to present your data. That's 
that would be the last thing of our webinar. You have a ticket trend over here. This is a common visual we used to get it that how to compare apple to apple comparison. Right? We used to have this uh, uh, column chart, stack column chart normally that while we we are doing an apple to apple comparison. What, what is the current month and what could be the last month trend? Right? But what if I present the same thing in this way? Is it more elaborative this, than this one? Or is it more elaborative? You are giving it print as well as you are defining a little bit of your analysis over there. Similarly, in the next visual, this is the most common visual everyone used to have it, either a pie chart or a donut chart. Either a pie chart or donut chart. Hey, everyone, DICE is offering a piece uh, data we are going to use. Okay, uh, this is a list. So, in the industrial, from the industrial point of view, we do normally don't prefer to go with the pie chart. This is this is a common practice. We everyone, even me, even myself, I'll be uh, I I might have been doing the same thing. But as per the current practices in the industry, it's it's not a good visual. It's it's not a good visual to uh, present your data in the market right now these days. Though it is a good visual when you have limited categories. But when you are a number of uh, categories, like five or six categories, then you are not able to explain the things over here. So it would be explained like this. See, you are having different scenarios over here, before and after. A good presentation of what you are doing. See, you are giving a little bit of analysis, you have the rating sections and you are presenting your data. This is another presentation of the data, the top 10 design concerns. The lines, the bar chart is good. The data model, the data presentation is good, but I'm not able to have a bifurcation of what is the topmost or what is the good part of the thing. I'm getting a similar sort of a line over here, gray, gray, gray. How about if I give, put some colors over here? Now I'm from from the from the very uh, far side of uh, on my screen. I can see that like this. These are the seven top top design concerns over here. These are the seven ones, and rest are at the lower end, right? And this is uh, a heat map. Anyone ha ever has eaten uh, uh, an ice ball? Ice gola, or normally we say it gola ganda. Anyone has experienced that of eating that thing? Yes. So this is a gola ganda, and you don't have to make a gola ganda of your uh, visual, even your report. So you have to be very much choosy of your colors. If you are taking one color, saturate one color at a time, you have to take the variants over there. So it's it's a heat map over here, and you are taking a variant of this dark grayish blue, and you are presenting everywhere over here. See, and while making a report over here, this is a common psychology, human psychology that you go from from left to right. It's a Z. So make your visuals the most perfect visual at one, then the two, and then the third one, and the least thing on the this side of it, on your report, right? And I'm open for questions and answers. If you have any, I'm here to answer those questions. I may say I, I'm, I love to answer those questions. सर मुझे ये पूछना था कि हम अगर बेसिक स्टार्ट करें तो किस हिसाब से करें और कैसे लर्निंग स्टार्ट करें बीए आह 
देखिए जी बेसिकली मुर्तजा साहब ये जो ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम है डेटा वे हाउसिंग एंड बी का जिसका आप वेबिनार भी देख रहे हैं दिस इज वन ऑफ द बेसिक मॉडल्स राइट नाउ जो कि डेटा इंजीनियरिंग को भी कवर करता है और डेटा एनालिसिस को भी कवर करता है ठीक हो गया तो आप इसको लेके जब आगे जाओगे तो आपको एक बेसिक इंफॉर्मेशन लेवल स्किल डेवलपमेंट का मिलेगा आपको जब वो स्किल डेवलपमेंट का आपको देखो आप आप डेटा वेयर हाउसिंग का डेटा इंजीनियरिंग वाला पार्ट भी कर रहे हो और फिर उसको एक विजुअलाइजेशन वे में भी देख रहे हो सो यू आर क्लबिंग बोथ ऑफ द थिंग्स यू आर यू आर eliminating that gap of data technology and business over there together right so is tarike se aap us cheez ko behtar tarike se understanding develop kar rahe ho and this is what the basic course is all about and this is one of the basic courses uh, i hope ki maine aapki question ka answer kar diya ji ji sir thank you so much you welcome और सर मुझे ये पूछना था कि ईटीएल के लिए बेस्ट टूल कौन सा है जैसे सर ने बताया टैलेंट है इन्फॉर्मेटिका है तो इन सब से या एस में जो यूज करते हैं एस एस आई एस इसका आंसर फाहद भाई देंगे पर बिफोर गोइंग टू वर्ड्स फाहद भाई फाहद भाई एक मेरे पास क्वेश्चन आया है नसार सईद साहब का नसार सईद साहब बेसिकली बेसिक टेक्निकल स्किल और नॉलेज की बिल्कुल जरूरत नहीं है हम हैं आपको सिखाने के लिए हमारा काम ही ये है कि हमने आपको क्रॉलिंग सिखाना है देन विल आफ्टर क्रॉलिंग विल टेक योर हैंड एंड विल विल आस्क यू टू टू वॉक एंड आफ्टर दैट हम आपको प्रोजेक्ट्स देंगे क्विजेस लेंगे एंड देन विल आस्क यू टू रन ओके सो दिस इज हाउ वट्स आवर प्लान इज ऑल अबाउट over to you fahad bhai uh, to explain uh, to answer the question of mr tamali sir ji sir thank you so much acha uh, etl tools ka ye hota hai ki um, har etl tool ke apne pros and cons hote hain market mein aapko betahasha naam mil jayenge wo chahe informatica ka ho data stage ka ho sap boards aur talent ka ho lekin in saron ki basics jo hoti hain wo same hoti hai ke aapne डाटा एक्सट्रैक्ट कैसे करना है उसमें ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन कैसे करनी है और फर्दर उसको लोड कर कैसे करना है ठीक है तो क्या अगर आपने इस कोर्स में वैसे हम टैलेंट कवर करेंगे लेकिन टैलेंट का हैंड्स ऑन करने का ये मतलब नहीं है कि आपको जो है आगे इन्फॉर्मेट होता में कोई मसला होगा वो थोड़ा बहुत डिफरेंस होता है ठीक है लेकिन बेसिक सारों की सिमिलर होती है तो चाहे आप टैलेंट पे हैंड्स ऑन कर लो इन्फॉर्मेटिका पे कर लो नाइफाई पे कर लो जिस पे भी कर लो ठीक है वो आपको एक जनरल सेंस बता देगा कि डाटा को एक्सट्रैक्ट करके ट्रांसफॉर्म कैसे करना है और उसको लोड कैसे करना है इवन फर्दर अपनी पाइपलाइंस को ऑप्टिमाइज कैसे करना है ठीक है सो होपफुली आई आंसर योर क्वेश्चन थैंक यू सो मच सर ओके गाइस आई हैव अ फ्रेंड ओवर हियर एज़ वेल मिस्टर ट्रस्ट ही हैज जॉइंड अस फ्रॉम साउथ अफ्रीका एम आई राइट मिस्टर ट्रस्ट and i hope that you have enjoyed the session if you if you have any question we are open to answer those questions uh, are... sir mere do do questions hain sure uh, ek sawal to mera ye tha ki hum jaise ab ye course lete hain to hum isme kitna advance jayenge aur at the end of the course hum ye kya kitna keh sakte hain ki humne is field se ya data warehousing se related hum kitna percent seekh sakenge ya seekh jayenge agar hum is course ko full hand training le lete hain ya kar lete hain दूसरा मुझे ये पूछना था कि दूसरा सवाल ये था कि जिस तरीके से अब हम मैंने कंटेंट्स कौन, देखे थे उसमें ये था कि स्किल से रिलेटेड हम देखेंगे कि हमने डेटा किस तरह देखना है तो हम क्या पावर बीआई में जब हम जाएंगे विजुलाइजेशन में जाएंगे तो हम ये भी देखेंगे कि हम एपीआई या लाइव डेटा को किस तरह कनेक्ट करेंगे या ए के थ्रू हम डेटा को किस तरीके से इसमें कनेक्ट कर कनेक्ट कर सकेंगे अगर आप पहले अपना देख लें तो फिर मैं इनको आगे बताता हूँ जी शो काइंडली जो भी ये थे आप अपना जो डाटा वेयर हाउसिंग से रिलेटेड है वो पोर्शन अगर काइंडली रिफ्रेश कर दो मैं थोड़ी डिस्कशन हो सकते हैं उसमें सर ये था कि जिस तरीके से मैं ये पूछा था कि हम 
इस कोर्स में हम कितना एडवांस जाएंगे डेटा वेयर हाउसिंग में और जब ये कोर्स एंड हो जाएगा या हम ये ट्रेनिंग कंप्लीट कर लेंगे तो इसमें हम ये क्या कितना कह सकते हैं हमें इस फील्ड से रिलेटेड कितना परसेंट हमने सीख लिया ओके okay. okay. ये देखो पहले तो ये कि लर्निंग का एक ऐसा फैक्टर होता है जो आपकी थ्रू आउट लाइफ तो चलता ही रहता है ठीक है इस कोर्स में हम ये कोशिश पूरी करेंगे कि मैक्सिमम uh, हम कवर कर रहे हैं जो बेसिक्स है उन बेसिक्स से पूरे रिलेट करेंगे एडवांस कॉन्सेप्ट से ठीक है सो जो डाटा वेयर हाउस को एक जो अभी मैंने प्रेजेंटेशन में थी लेयर्स कुछ मेंशन की थी हम प्रॉपरली उनको uh, कैसे एक्शन में वो आ रही हैं और फर्दर उनका हर लेयर का अपना पर्पस क्या है ठीक है ये हम इन डेप्थ इसमें स्टडी करेंगे फर्दर उसको ए टूल से हम कैसे uh, जो है लिंक कर रहे हैं अपने डाटा वेयर हाउस को वो भी और बाकी ये कि एडवांस कॉन्सेप्ट वो डिपेंड करता है कि एडवांस किस चीज को कहते हैं क्योंकि वो आपके सिनेरियो बेस्ड मोस्टली एडवांस कॉन्सेप्ट होते हैं फॉर एग्जांपल आपने एक डाटा मॉडल बना दी ठीक है अब डाटा मॉडल में आगे आपको कोई आ, मसला आता है कि उसकी आ, उसको उसमें से डाटा फैच करते में आपको बहुत टाइम लग रहा है फिर आप उसको एक अलग से उस सीनैरियो को कैसे कैटर करते हो लेकिन एक बेसिक जो होती हैं वो सेम रहती हैं वही जैसे मैंने मुर्तजा को बताया कि ई की बेसिक्स हो या किसी की भी वेयर हाउसिंग की भी बेसिक्स हो वो सेम रहती है जब आपको फर्दर इन आगे जब आप इस फील्ड में प्रोग्रेस करोगे तो आप क्लियरली को रिलेट कर सकोगे उन बेसिक्स को और उन बेसिक से ही फर्दर आप अपना जो है आंसर उस टाइम पे ड्राइव कर सकते हो तो इस इस पूरे कोर्स में इनशाला हम बेसिक्स को अच्छे से कवर कर देंगे Okay, Hamza. Uh, now coming towards uh, like uh, what 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 will be covering in the Power BI part. Uh, Power BI के अंदर uh, mostly like uh, हम एक certain advanced level तक जाएंगे. क्योंकि uh, over here DAX is also involved. Without DAX, we are nothing in Power BI. And DAX is basically the key language of uh, Power BI. That's data analysis expression. Based upon that, we'll be making different uh, measures over there. and those measures will be presented in the form of uh, you know, different visuals as far as you concern uh, regarding the live data is concerned yes uh, we'll be touching that part as well but we'll be touching it under the parameters uh, part that's mostly covered in uh, power query right so we won't be uh, getting that uh, the, the other part is covered in power bi desktop and that that is mostly linked with the what if analysis so what if analysis is like uh, we'll, we'll be touching that particular part but not that much because over here in the data warehousing and bi part we have to cover the bi section up to 60% of the full capacity okay because it's the main part of that particular course is data warehousing and bi part is like it's clubbing up in order to have uh, uh, your analysis in the visualization forms or how you can use uh, a bi tool right so this this is how we are doing it so it's the basic course of starting anything in this data analytical or data analysis field so this is this is the reason we are always pushing participants to go for data warehousing and bi uh, training program because this is one of the basic milestones uh, of that your goal to reach towards data sciences and machine learning or anywhere else in the business analytics or business intelligence road map so this is the first standing where you can go move forward so this this is this is the basic purpose of this our training program is i i hope i have uh, given your answer यस सर बस सर ये एक रिक्वेस्ट है कि जब हम इस कोर्स को कंप्लीट कर लें तो ये एक इस तरह का पार्ट है कि बेशक उसके रिलेटेड सारा नहीं हो लेकिन एक रोड मैप समझा दिया जाए या हमें बता दिया जाए कि हम इसके ऊपर अमल करके क्योंकि अक्सर हम कहीं काम भी कर रहे होते हैं या काम करने जा रहे होते हैं ना तो पहली चीज यही होती है कि आप ए के थ्रू डेटा एक्सट्रैक्ट कर सकते हैं या ए के थ्रू हमें डेटा ला दे सकते हैं तो बंदा मैंने सर्च भी किया काफी तो इनिशियली हम फिर वहीं भी फंस जाते हैं कि डेटा एपीआई के थ्रू किस तरह लाया जाए या क्या किया जाए तो उससे रिलेटेड अगर एंड पे कुछ ना कुछ तरह का रख दिया जाए तो ये भी एक एड ऑन अच्छा होगा जी जी बिल्कुल बिल्कुल इफ आर वी हैविंग मोर क्वेश्चंस अवेस इज देयर एनी क्वेश्चंस 
Mr. Trust, if you have any question, you, we, are, we are open to answer those questions. I think uh, there is no more question. So we should conclude it. Mm, it's it's your call. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Ahmed and Shoaib and Fahad Ikram for your quality time. Uh, we had a great informative session with you guys, and thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I have shared the contact number and the registration link for Data Warehouse and BI training in the chat section. So you can explore the details from that link. And if you have any queries, you can contact us through the contact number mentioned in the chat. Thank you for joining. Allah Hafiz. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you from my end as well. And have a, have a nice evening and looking forward to you all in data warehousing and BI. Thank you. Sir. Thank, you everyone. thank you for joining. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. Cheers. Bye-bye.